Honda launched their crossover SUV, the Elevate, very recently in South Africa. At the launch, we drove the upper spec Elegance with its CVT automatic transmission. Now we've got the comfort spec in a manual form. Let's check it out. The bold grille is unmistakably Honda. It looks the same as some of the other models in the range, which is not a bad thing. But what the Elevate does offer you, and you've got to consider the market segment it plays in, is LED headlights and daytime running lights at the front and LED lights at the back. These are items that you may not always expect in this market segment. It's got a nice lower spoiler effect over there and a skid plate effect that it gives you because it is a crossover SUV. Never forget that. You come around on the side over here and obviously it's got cladding around the wheel arches and down the side of the body. On elegant spec you'll see this chrome trim that goes with it. On comfort it's just the black cladding. It's up to you which you prefer. Another very big difference between the two is you've just got wheel caps on the 16 inch wheels over here whereas the Elegance model gets 17-inch alloy wheels. Ah, those are things you can decide for yourself. You do get push-button keyless entry and locking on this one, whereas on the Elegance you get proper keyless entry. Well, again, features you can think about. But you've got to just press a little button over here to unlock the other doors. Let's take a look at the space in the rear. Door opens quite wide, which is nice. Let me jump in quickly. And let me tell you, what do we have? Well, lack of USBs at the back, which could be a bit of a pain for family use. There's a 12 volt socket and you do have air con vents at the back. Driver's seat is set for myself. Look at the space. This is pretty impressive, again, for a mid-size or actually a crossover SUV. Don't forget that. One of the differences between comfort and elegance, very nice, neat-looking cloth trim on this one with stitching, but on elegance, you get artificial leather. Hmm. I don't know, some people prefer cloth. It's really up to you. Coming around to the rear of the car, let's take a good look over here. And the first thing that you notice is, like so many cars these days, you've got the light bar that runs all the way across the back. And I mentioned LED tail lighting and the skid plate at the rear. Pop open the boot. Sorry, folks, it's manual. But look at this. Honda claim 458 liters of boot space with the rear seats up. I'll do the Allen test in a second, but I want to show you here something else that I do like full-size spare wheel under the board. Got to say good stuff on that Honda. Now, there is a slight lip that you've got to lift your luggage over. It's not flat like some opposition, but let's have a look because let's check out the Allen test. And I can tell you, for a crossover SUV, this is very definitely a one and a half plus Allen boot. In fact, it gets close to a two Allen boot. That's big. But I said to you, 458 liters. But why you've got more space in the rear seat and in the boot is quite simple. The Elevate is built in India. And I think you should know by now that India have a tax bracket that limits cars to under four meters long. And a lot of the opposition in this category are just under four meters long. Honda have basically ignored that factor. This car is approximately 4.3 meters long, same as let's put it this way, the Suzuki Grand Vitara and of course the Toyota Urban Cruiser, just two of its opposition obviously. They've ignored the four meter limit, gone slightly longer and look at the benefit it gives you on space. That really makes a difference. Close over there. Both versions do get the same very familiar Honda 1.5 litre four-cylinder petrol engine, no turbo. 88 kilowatts, 145 newton meters of torque, driving the front wheels, and as I've stated, with a choice of either a CVT automatic or, as we're driving, 
a six-speed manual gearbox. Hello, my name is Michael. I'm the owner of Change Cars and the host of the TV show All Things Motoring. I have one mission and that is to make a difference to the motoring public. Making a difference how? Making sure that you have safe options, making sure that you have knowledge. In that regard, it is my absolute pleasure and privilege to work with Alan Rosenmeyer of Motor Matters. The man with a hat, I'm the man with no hat, he's a man with a knowledge. Thank you for watching. Hitting the open road in the Elevate, it's smooth, it's comfortable, it's pretty relaxed. You've got to remember and take into account the fact that this 1.5 four-cylinder from Honda is a buzzy engine. It's quite a high revving engine, even with a six-speed manual, it doesn't matter. In six gear, you're always going to have that buzziness about it, but it, you know what, it's a sporty sort of feel. It's quite pleasant and there's, you get used to it very, very quickly. Obviously, because it's only 89 kilowatts and 145 newton meters of torque, you will find that obviously you hit any sort of uphill as we're about to now, and you'll notice I can't stay in sixth gear. I'll definitely have to shift down one gear down to fifth for this little uphill stretch as I'm about to do right now. But you know what? You don't even notice it. It's smooth. Uh, it's relaxed and a very light action clutch gearbox etc which also makes life very very pleasant it's pretty spacious it's comfortable uh, this is of course the comfort spec not the elegance which you can only get with the CVT automatic gearbox uh, and you only get comfort with the manual which uh, to me I would have liked to have seen a manual with in particular the extra airbags you get with the elegant spec that's my big deal. I could live without the other differences between the two models. But I've got to tell you that in its category, in this market segment, I think it's pretty good. It certainly is up there with the competitors in this segment and in this category. And overall, I think it does a pretty good job. So I think Honda have done well with this one. Uh, on launch, I just drove the CVT Auto. Nice to actually be driving the manual this time round. And it is really a very, very drivable little crossover SUV. Uh, of course, fuel economy is always a very, very big factor. Well, on our country trip, 89.8K so far, 5.5 litres per 100. Now, let me see if I can scroll through and find you a different figure. Our overall figure so far now, including this country trip and all our town urban driving, is showing 6.6. .6. That's with a six-speed manual gearbox. And I would say that tells me that living with this car on an everyday basis, I think you could very, very comfortably live at under 7 litres per 100. Not bad for a car of this type. Jumping in behind the wheel, well, your instrumentation is fairly basic, but it tells you what you need to know, and that's important. Elegance gets more of a TFT screen in front of the driver. So choose again, it's your choice. Now, you don't get all your buttons and your controls on the steering wheel like on most cars. If you want to change your various screens and information, especially in that center, you've got to do it on that button over there. Again, not exactly a hardship, because what I want to show you is the following. We've now done 350 kilometers since I reset. I showed you earlier in the video that we did 5.5 liters per 100 on a country trip. Well, that's showing 6.7 now, but let's just go further and have a look. Our average, we've done 655 kilometers on this test now, averaging 6.8 liters per 100. That's the overall figure for the entire test. And let me tell you, that involves a lot of urban driving. I'm pretty impressed, and I think that's a figure anybody should be able to achieve. As I said to you, you do have some controls on the steering wheel, but they are a bit limited, none on the other side, and not that I used it, but where I showed you over there just now, there's also your cruise control buttons over there. So it's got what you want, and that's what counts. Moving over to the center, you get your seven inch touch screen over here, the infotainment touch screen. It gives you everything you want. It does everything you want. It's basic, but so what? And of course, the most important is it does have a reverse camera with detail as well, which is important. And you can change views over there. That's your mirror view and over there, the rear view, etc. So it does give you that. And that's useful and important to have. So that's fine. You come down over here. You've got your automatic air conditioning, your auto air conditioning. Pretty effective, although you do need to put the 
fan up a bit higher to really cool the car down but I'm being very picky on that down here is a nice little spot because it actually fits a cell phone really nicely look at that and for once when you're using one of the two USBs over here and this one's the one for screen mirroring you can put the cable into your phone without it twisting bending or affecting your connection in fact I prefer using the cable but it does have wireless connection but it doesn't have a charging inductive charging pad I think I can live without that but you've got the two USBs there and you've got a 12 volt over there you've got a pair of cup holders and you've got your six-speed manual transmission it's pretty smooth it's pretty effective but I must tell you that for the first day or so I did struggle to get used to the clutch on this car it takes very high and very suddenly but live with it a day or two and I'm sure you won't have any problems whatsoever it really isn't a big deal and I think I'm making more of it than I need to but I'm just pointing out things to you and you've got a good old-fashioned manual handbrake again really nothing to complain about you take a look at the dashboard over here it's got a sort of nice flow look at that a rounded edge to it and then you've got the sort of aluminium look strip in the center over here it's all very neat and I must say well put together this car feels solid it feels well put together and it feels like I would expect from Honda I think that's a nice way of putting it and a very very easy way of putting it there's plenty of space I've mentioned that to you before and your front seats do have nice side bolstering they're pretty comfortable I've had no issues whatsoever going back to the differences between comfort and elegance well I mentioned the artificial leather the big difference between the two that I would really have an issue with is that comfort comes with two airbags elegance comes with six and you know I'm all about safety so that is my only real thing that I would worry about between the two the elegance also comes with a standard not panoramic roof but a standard normal sunroof which as you can see this one doesn't have but again these are choices you have to make now interestingly Honda South Africa have decided to only offer us two model options in the Elevate range this one the Comfort Manual or the Elegance with the CVT I'd love to track the sales it's a bit early I haven't seen the figures yet for what they've been what they've sold in the first month or two whether there isn't room for at least one more model in the range and what I would like to see is an elegance manual because 99% because of those airbags that's what I'm missing on this car and I'm sorry I'm repeating myself but I think it is that important to me to think about that price wise let's talk this one 369,900 Rand the Elegance CVT Auto, 429,900 Rand. So what's that? You've got 370 to 430, 60,000 Rand difference, right? What cost is there on another four airbags? I don't know what they come. But if I believe if they could bring in an Elegance manual under 400,000 Rand, I think that could really, really be a winner in our current market it is very competitive with all the opposition I've mentioned them to you I'm not gonna well I mentioned the two bigger ones you've of course got the Hyundai venue the Kia Sonnet the list would go on and on if I had to try and give it to you you know this market segment so they are competitive no doubt yes you'll get more spec from maybe a cherry to go for but that's the only one that really comes in there this is a solid offering I think and I'm going to use my corny line from the launch the Elevate is going to lift Honda's sales in South Africa and I think it deserves to do so check it out for yourself I think it'll be worth it for motor matters for change cars and for all things motoring I'm Alan R and I'll see you next time